أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا حبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا قيل لهم لا تفسدوا في الأرض قالوا إنما نحن مصلحون ألا إنهم هم المفسدون ولكن لا يشعرون My dear brothers and sisters I've recited from Surah Al-Baqarah two verses only. These verses mean the following. And when they're told, do not spread corruption on this earth, they answer, we are but improving things. Or oh, verily, <coughs> it is they, they who are spreading corruption, but they perceive it not. My brothers and sisters, one of the biggest troubles of our 21st century world, or two troubles of our biggest, of its nature and biggest for all of us. One is corruption, and the other one is zulm, injustice. Corruption and injustice has spread on this earth beyond the <coughs> at a scale that words cannot describe. What duties do you and I have to stand against corruption and injustice? What should we do as people in order to make a difference in the world, in the lives of the world, especially people around? Well, brothers and sisters, we are clear about our duties. However, I believe many Muslims don't practice what they already know and therefore corruption and injustice prevails. I want to talk about the people of Rohingya today, the people of Burma, Muslims in Arakan, who have been facing persecution, injustice for a very long time. When I was 14, even younger, I think 12, 13, 14, I began reading books about the Muslims of Burma. And I came to know even then, for three decades ago or longer, more than 30 years ago, when Muslims were being persecuted, being killed, being made stateless, homeless by the Burmese junta, 30 years on, they're still facing the same persecution. I'm astonished that when I was 12, 13, 14, I was reading about the Burmese Muslims and I'm still witnessing the same massacre repeating again and again. When I was young, my brothers and sisters, I remember reading about the Palestinians living under subjugation, of being dispossessed, of being taken over by their homes have been taken, their lands have been stolen. 30 years on, I still see Palestinians dispossessed. I remember reading about Kashmir when I was young. It hasn't changed. You see, when politicians witness massacres, they always say, never again. I'm sure you've heard this, never again. <coughs> What they mean, actually, Allah knows the best. But there never again seems to mean nothing to us. Because it keeps on happening again and again and again. Never again is an empty, hollow phrase of hollow, empty politicians. Who mean nothing and do nothing. <coughs> If they meant something, and if they were doing something, 
Why did we witness only not that long ago the massacre of 10,000 young men and children in Bosnia, in Srebrenica, by the Serbian army. <coughs> if never again was true, if these politicians were true, if they were honest, why did we witness massacre of the Srebrenica Muslims, <coughs> 10,000 of them? In fact, not only witnessed it, they were being massacred by the Serbs <coughs> in a safe haven supposedly protected by United Nations peacekeepers. <coughs> Why? If this empty, hollow phrase actually had some substance, why have we been watching 400,000 Syrians being butchered by Bashar al-Assad? One man's desire to stay in power. One man's desire to stay in power. Killing 400,000 people in that process. In fact, not just him, his entourage and thugs are called the murderers around him equally <coughs> thugs. I have no shame in condemning Iran for what it has done. The evil of Hezbollah became apparent when they sent down their own volunteers to come and kill the Syrians. They don't want you to talk about it. Why not? Evil is evil. Whether you come from Sunni background or Shia background, I couldn't give a monkeys about it. What I care about is justice and fairness for the people of the world. If never again was true, why have we seen failure of the entire international community in preventing the death of 400,000 Syrians? What for? Why have they been killed? Why have they been killed? And why have the world leaders not done enough to stop it from happening? And when you are asking them, when they are told, do not spread corruption on this earth, they answer, we are not doing anything, but we are actually improving things. That's what exactly what the leaders say. We are not causing corruption on this earth, we are improving things. Wallahi, Allah says, Verily, they are the ones who are spreading corruption on this earth. They perceive it not, but they are the corrupt ones. They have, we have been watching, and these so-called leaders have been witnessing silently the terrible plight of people of Kashmir, terrible plight of the people of Palestine. South Sudan, Rwanda, Central African <coughs> Republic. They did not stop it. They did not do enough to stop it. Why, I want to ask. Whose interest do we serve? What do we gain by seeing humanity being slaughtered in this way? <laughs> they are the corrupt people. The leaders are the corrupt ones today in the world. And they don't want you and I to speak about it. <coughs> when they say never again, they mean more genocides while, while leader, world leaders watch. You see, brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters in Rohingya, in Burma, are being killed by Buddhist terrorists. If ISIS is Islamic or Islamist terrorist, let's use the same terminology. Those who are killing the Muslims in Arakan, they are Buddhist terrorists. That doesn't sound right. How can Buddhists be terrorists? We thought Buddhist people were peace-loving people on this earth. They can't even harm a fly. They eat vegetarian food because they don't want to harm an animal. And yet, in Rohingya, in Arakan, systematically, Buddhist monks are involved. Buddhist priests are involved. But his people are involved in orchestrating an ethnic cleansing of the Burmese Muslims, the Rohingya Muslims, the Arakani Muslims. They are killing the men, they are burning them alive, they are destroying, they are killing children, they are hacking people to death and they are leaving their bodies to be eaten away by vultures in the open field. They are gang raping sisters, our sisters, women and young, uh, young girls. 
gang raping them by these terrorists of Bama. How many of you have seen one Buddhist leader, one Buddhist monk come on television to condemn what the Burmese Buddhists are doing? How many have you seen? And yet if one single atrocity was committed by one deranged Muslims, many Muslim leaders would be marched, frog marched into the television station, asked to be condemning everything that is going on. In fact, we are asked often to take responsibility when it is not our responsibility. Brothers and sisters, what crime have the Burmese Muslims committed? What did they do wrong? Why are they being killed in this way? When these leaders of the world turn a blind eye and say, never again, you know what? Allahi, I hope and I pray that I'm wrong. But if it was a Christian group of people, <coughs> if it was a Christian minority in any country in the world, persecuted in the same way. You would have seen howling and screaming from every corner of the Western world. Every country would have screamed. There would have been United Nations resolution. There would have been United Nations peacekeepers. There would have been military threats. There would have been sanctions. The ambassador would have been sacked and ambassadors would have been recalled. Every country would have taken action. But you know what? It is sad. And I hate to say this. It seems it's okay if the genocide is against the Muslims. It's okay. Ignore them. They're your teams, the orphans. They have no home. They have no power. They have no authority. They have no leaders. They have no champions who can stand up and tell the world enough is enough. It's okay. They're like a child in a divorce custody. Nobody wants it. It's like a football being kicked around in left, right and center. Well, it's not good enough. We Muslims are human too. Muslims of Arakan are human too. <coughs> Muslims of Syria are human too. <coughs> Muslims of Palestine are human too. Muslims of Kashmir are human too. Do not cause facade on this earth and expect us to turn a blind eye. My brothers and sisters, Muslims have lived in Burma in Arakan state for a long time, since 8th century. From then till 1947, <coughs> when constitution of Burma or Union of Burma was proclaimed and first Burmese citizenship law was passed. Guess what? Rohingyans were given citizenship. Muslims were given citizenship in the original constitution, independence of Burma in 1948, 1959. All race were given equal rights. But in 1962, something terrible happened. Army General Niwin overthrew the government through a military coup. And in 1978, Operation Naga Min was launched, and Rohingya and Muslims were targeted, massacred. 250,000 Rohingyans fled their homes, and they took shelter in Bangladesh. Brothers and sisters, in 1982, Burma citizenship, citizenship law was enacted by the illegitimate, despotic, brutal military dictatorship. And at that time, Rohingyas were stripped of their citizenship. 800,000 people, this is official statistics, became stateless. Statelessness. 800,000 Rohingyas became stateless and statelessless. Was there an outcry in the world? No. Did anyone, anyone take any action against the Burmese junta? No. <clears throat> and since then, 2012, and now waves upon waves of massacre of the Muslims of Arakan is taking place. And very little is being done to stop it. Very little is being done to stop it. As if people of Burma are not human. In fact, even if there were animals, animal rights groups would be defending them. I'm so appalled. I'm so appalled that nothing has been done to stop this from happening. Brothers and sisters, I went to Bangladesh in 2012. And I wanted to go to the Rohingya refugee camps in Bangladesh to see their state. <clears throat> Somehow I managed 
Bangladeshi government did everything possible to stop me from going. They had security guards outside my hotel room waiting for me so that I don't go. One early morning at Tahajjud prayer time, I escaped and I arrived at the Rohingya camps. And it was early morning and what I saw with my own eyes, I'll never forget. In the fog of the December winter nights, the cold mist still rising from the earth as the sun is coming up, I could see human being rising from the earth. It was a scary sight. As I went closer and closer, guess what I saw with my own eyes? People were living in holes in, on the earth. They were burrowing holes like animals, like cats and dogs do, because they have no place to live, even in Bangladesh, living like refugees, living like animals. Their homes were made of plastic sheets that they had collected from the streets, dustbin bags that they had collected from the sheets, rugs that people had thrown away, bamboo sticks and broken tree leaves and broken tree branches made their roofs. Most of them lived in squalor condition, in abject poverty, poverty that you and I cannot even imagine. And those people have been suffering for more than four decades. And the world leaders have been watching silently, not doing enough to repatriate them back to their own homes, to tell the Burmese junta, enough is enough, stop it right now. Otherwise, we are taking decisive action against you. It is a shame. It is a shame. That's why, that's why you are required to know what your duties are. That's why you're required to stand firm <coughs> against injustice, brutality and corruption. Our religion, Islam, is based on justice and fairness for all people. Anyone treats anybody unjustly. We stand against the valimin, those who are oppressors. We stand against brutal people and dictators and despots of the world. We do. That's our faith. We should not be shy about what our religion teaches when it comes to justice. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, people of Rohingya have suffered enough. And we need to do something about it. We need to do something about it together, collectively, as soon as possible. Otherwise, more children will be burnt, more human beings will be killed, and their corpse to be, will be left on the sides of the roads for the vultures to eat. More women will be raped in Burma, and nothing will be done again and again. We will not stand silently and watch this happening. We shall not stand silently and watch this happening. Mark my words. We shall protest. We shall raise our concerns and our voices in every corner of this earth so that the world knows that we may appear as Muslims, yetim, orphans, but we are not orphans. We have our faith. And we don't give up because Allah says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not despair and do not give up ever. Do not be sad even if you are in troubles and tribulations. For if you truly believe in Allah, Allah will give you elevation. Allah will give you success and a better future. We believe this will be true. We don't give up and we don't become sad. We remain resolute in our course for action. We remain resolute in our course for justice, in our call for justice, justice for all people of all parts of the world. May Allah protect me, protect us all, and especially our brothers and sisters in Rohingya from the atrocities and barbarities that they are facing. May Allah enable us to practice all that we've heard. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah says in the Quran: "ولا نبل ونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والعنقس والثمرات وبشر الصابر." Allah says in the Quran: "We will test you. ولا نبل ونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع from fear and loss." and hunger, <coughs> and loss of your properties and your wealth and your families. We will be tested. You think this is enough for you to say, I believe and you will not be tested? 
Our test right now is to remain resolute in justice, in fairness for all people, even when we witness <coughs> massacres happening around the world. Not to become silent, because silence is not an option as a Muslim. You see, brothers and sisters, Aung San Suu Kyi may become and may have been a darling of the Western world and their leaders. You know Aung San Suu Kyi, don't you? The democracy, democracy movement leader of Burma. She was under house arrest for a long time for opposing the military junta. She got Nobel Prize for peace. You know what? She has refused to recognize the existence of Muslims in Rakhine State. She has refused to recognize that those Muslims in Rakhine State are citizens of Burma. She has said nothing against the massacre of the Muslims of Burma. In fact, when Michelle Hussein from BBC was about to interview her, she objected to the interview by saying off the camera, I didn't know a Muslim was going to interview me. Truly exposing her color, that she hates Muslims, just like those brutal dictators do in Burma. Just like those Buddhist monks and terrorists do in Burma. I am asking you and us all together to collectively rise and call for Aung San Suu Kyi's Nobel Prize to be taken back again. Strip her off her Nobel Prize accolade. She doesn't deserve it. For a woman, for a leader of the world who receives Nobel Prize for peace, watching a massacre and a genocide when she is part of the government is a crime against humanity, a crime that is too far and too big for anyone to be given a Nobel Prize or a person to retain Nobel Prize. If Nobel Prize Committee has an iota of morality and principle within them, they would strip her of her Nobel Prize. They would. <coughs> we need to start where it matters most. Never again was claimed by many politicians. You know, United Nations as an organization is much needed in the world, but it's a defunct organization. It's a dysfunctional organization. It's being held hostage by five bullies, I call them, often using veto power to yield their own interest. Russia vetoes any resolution against Syria. America vetoes any resolution against Israel. China vetoes any resolution against Tibet, against uh, uh, itself for Tibet. How is that fair? There are 200 or so nations in the world. They don't have equal share and say on United Nations. I am ashamed of current United Nations dysfunctionality and complete morbid state, a, a comatose, comatose, comatose state. I'm ashamed of it. We need United Nations because that's the only platform from where nations can interrupt. Allah says in the Quran, you know, when, you, when it comes to good things, join together. Create helpful fudul, like Rasul created when he was young, before prophethood. Helpful fudul is important. Alliance of virtue. Join hands together in that which is good. Of course we should. If United Nations ambition is good, we should join and we should support it. But it can't be held hostage by a small number of people just because they have nuclear weapons or they happen to be a permanent member of, a, of, of, of the United Nations. It can't be. The world has changed. That must change. You see, if the United Nations was truly powerful, Burma would not get away with what it is doing today. Bashar al-Assad would not get away with what he is doing today. Israel would not get away with what it has done to the Palestinians. India would not get away with what it has done to the Kashmiris. Nobody would get away because there would be an international body of people who would account each nation state. But because it's dysfunctional, people get away with it. Because there are bully boys who support such atrocities in the world silently, they get away with it. And I have no embarrassment, I have no fear of saying the truth for what it is. We need United Nations, but we need a reformed United Nations with equal state of all nations around the table. We need to end the world of dictators and despots. We need to respect human rights of all people. All people. We need to respect lives of all people. Currently it's not happening. I'm asking you to do this. I would like us all to call United Nations to put, 
put peacekeeping force in Burma right now, even though it's dysfunctional. Did you know the largest number of United Nations peacekeeping force comes from Bangladesh? Did you know that? The largest Bangladeshi provides. Nigerians, Pakistanis, Turkish, large number of Muslims are in United Nations peacekeeping forces. We want United Nations forces now in Burma so that they can stop the junta and the military and the Buddhist terrorists from massacring the Burmese people, the Arakan people of Arakan. All Burmese people must be returned to their own homes, repatriated their, to their own homes, given their homes back, given their citizenship back, given the dignity and honor they deserve. All Burmese leaders should be tried for genocide, including Aung San Suu Kyi, and there should be an international arrest warrant against them. And you, brothers and sisters, Muslims in this country, and Muslims around the world, what should you do? Well, you should be engaged in lobbying, in writing, in protesting, in what we call legitimate protest, legitimate organization and mobilization of people. Write to your MP immediately, or your MPs, your parliament, with the strongest condemnation and asking for action. Lobby your government, contact the foreign secretary, demand action. Speak to the media, report, ask, request for this story to become priority immediately. Mobilize public opinion, arrange demonstrations, protest meetings everywhere. Create social media storms in Twitter, in Facebook and everything else. Let the world know that we are with Burmese. We are with Burmese Arakanis. We are Burmese too. Let them know that we will not tolerate such massacre anymore. And you know what? Donate all the money that you can so that those who are stateless in a desperate situation in the border regions can be fed. Emergency food and medicine can be given and those who are injured can be treated and given a shelter even for a temporary while. But our duty is to save lives, right? Our duty is to save lives. Allah says, Man Whoever saves one life, it is like they have saved the lives of the entire humanity. Whoever kills a life, man qatala nafsin bi ghayr nafsin al fasadin fil alt, fa ka'annama qatala nafs jamia. Whoever takes a life unfairly and unjustly, it is as though they have taken the lives of the entire humanity. I'm asking you, my brothers and sisters, to mobilize, to organize. And the Muslim countries, shame on you. Shame on Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, and Bangladesh. Shame on the neighboring Muslim countries. They could have taken more decisive action. They should have sacked the Burmese military attaché from their countries immediately. They should have called their ambassadors back. They should have threatened with all sorts of trade sanction, political sanction, and sanctions galore. Muslim world should have come together to defend the honor and the rights of the stateless people, forgotten people of Burma. <coughs> but they have failed miserably because they're disunited, they're powerless, they are spineless, and most unbefitting to be leaders of the Muslim world. Rasulullah said, when power is given to unfit people, await the Day of Judgment. For Day of Judgment is around the corner. Unfit people, dishonest people, untruth pe untruthful people are now leading the world and that must change. So to finish off, Allah says in the Quran, <coughs> And when they are told, do not spread corruptions on this earth, they answer, we are but improving things. Oh, verily Allah says, it is they who are spreading corruption, but they perceive it not. We perceive it very clearly, and we shall not tolerate corruption. We shall not tolerate injustice. We shall not tolerate indignity of human beings, wherever they are. May Allah bless us all. May Allah strengthen us all in our Iman and our Taqwa. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, protect us Ya Allah. Free our brothers and sisters in Burma Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, remove the calamities that have befallen them Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, Ya Akram Rahimin, protect them Ya Allah. Ya Allah, restore dignity to them Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, those culprits who have perpetrated the crime. Ya Allah, make them such that they can be punished on this earth and the hereafter Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, let the law of the world reach them and Punish them and put them behind bars, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Akramun Akramin. Let not a single person who is treated unjustly be let 
be left and left in the state. Ya Allah, relieve them and free them, Ya Allah. It restore dignity, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, free Syria from the tyrant, Ya Allah. Free Syria from the tyrant, Ya Allah. Free Al-Aqsa from occupation, Ya Allah. Free Kashmir from occupation, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, make us the best of ambassadors for your deen, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, enable us so that we can re represent your deen properly, Ya Allah. We can organize ourselves properly, Ya Allah. And we can stand together for justice and fairness, Ya Allah. Rabbana. تقبل منا إنك أنت سميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وإنهاء عن الفحشاء والمنكر بغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكرون يذكركم وشكرون لا تذكرون والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة